Okay. Um, so, if we had iron for the 12 spheres on the outside, they're magnetic, so they hold nice and together. While aluminum in the center is paramagnetic. It means it needs a lot of magnetic force for it to magnetize, but can magnetize. And having the 12 spheres, 12 magnets concentrate on the center, it would thus magnetize. And so, as thinking about this right now, maybe it is a black hole in that the energy radiates in the magnets. The 12 magnets are pointing inwards, and the diamagnetism is coming outwards through the tetrahedron and the pyramid, because that energy needs to radiate outwards. And what I mean by that is, say we make this whole thing out of 13 spheres. And so, like, think of 13 golf balls, and you put them together. So, in between this point, I have that drawing. Here we go. This one right here. So, you have, like, three spheres. And so, this is going to be one side of the, the cube octahedron. See that little center point right there? That would be filled in by a diamagnetic material. Um, good choices. You, you could use liquid would probably work best because it could actually start to flow through the material. And that was one concept I was talking about, the little side uh, piece. Uh, the inside vectors could influence flow through these holes. And water is diamagnetic. Um, mercury is about two, two and a half times more diamagnetic than water, and it's liquid at room temperature, and it's also really, really heavy. Uh, it's atomic number is 80, and I can't remember what its atomic weight is, but it's really heavy uh, atom, and it's liquid at room temperature. And it would be able to flow through uh, the, oops, wrong model. It'd be able to throw, flow through the, the piece. Uh, and so you could stick this whole thing in like, uh, ideally like a sphere of water. You'd want a sphere to replicate the shape. And yeah, that's the basic concept in using a paramagnetic material, uh, a ferromagnetic material, and then actual magnets, which are technically ferromagnetic. But neodymium magnets are made out of neodymium, boron, and iron. Iron's ferromagnetic. Neodymium's paramagnetic. And uh, boron is actually diamagnetic, so it's all three inter -tweep, interwoven together. And so that's that's basically a, the idea. Oh, oh, I can tell you exactly this part, and I think I might have mentioned it, but actually I have a diagram. I'm going to pull that up in a second, and I'm going to show you uh, how this looks on a diagram. One thing I forgot to mention about the cube octahedron, which is really cool, if you look at it from the sides, you have a hexagon. In total, there's, I believe, four hexagons? Yeah, there's four hexagons on this in terms of it going around. So each one makes, you just basically insert perfect hexagon as it go, goes around. And I'm going to show you in the diagram in just a second of how that's laid out.